How do you feel about math? Okay? And here are the four answer options. You can see them all up the screen. So touch the one that corresponds the most strongly to your opinions. I accidentally touched on one, but I didn't. Oh, I just clicked on Yeah, I tried to scroll on the other one. I like that. I don't know what to touch. I like the picture. Time's up. Okay, so now I'm not really surprised to see this with more than half of you choo choosing the answer that don't that show you don't like math. If I can get this one screen to work, sorry, this wasn't. So as you can see, it's. Oh, there we go. Oh, good. As you can see, it's very common to be nervous about studying math. Well, why is this the case? I found that a lot of people do not like I talk to you, don't like math because they feel confused and intimidated, and, and many and, and it's not fun for them. I can completely understand. I can completely understand this. I like to use a quote from my mentor here. Why would students want to ride a bicycle instead of drive a car? Ride a bicycle makes them much more difficult work. The same principle applies to higher level math. Myself included, no student wants to pursue a subject which makes him or her feel confused and intimidated. I can fully understand it's difficult for a math teacher in a classroom of 30 kids or more to ensure that every, every student understands what they need to. So I, I was thinking if I could help in the classroom, I would really make a difference. Therefore, I decided that a good project for me would be math tutoring. And this project had, had a few main goals. First, my the goal was to increase the understanding of math by high school students. The second goal was to determine if math tutoring by a student rather than another teacher would be beneficial for the students struggling with math. Third was to improve my own, own communication skills while, while looking at a field which I'm interested in math education. And the other one was to provide community service by assisting students who need it. This project meets community service and career exploration requirements in the following way. In community service, I'm assisting whoever, whoever needs it, and I'm also assisting Mr. Freeman, okay? Because then he doesn't need to really have that student and he can work with others. For career exploration purposes, I could potentially be a math educator, so this would be this would be an exploration into that field. Okay? So now I knew what I wanted to do. I wanted to work in the math classroom, but which one was the best? I then learned that Mr. Freeman, as you may know, would be offering a math interventions course in a period when I didn't have anything else to do. The class covered um, Algebra 2, Geometry, Pre-Calculus, and Calculus, all subjects which I had already taken and had a good, solid understanding of the material. In addition, I already had Mr. Freeman for both pre calc and Calculus, so I knew I'd be taught and I knew I would feel comfortable in the classroom. I approached Mr. Freeman and I asked if I could assist in his math interventions course. Mr. Freeman thought this was a good idea and it could really help. For my mentor, I looked to a retired math teacher who I absolutely admired, Mr. David Tilk. I had had Mr. Tilk for one year at the high school and was excited to be able to work with him again. When he proved what I wanted to do, Mr. Tilk was also very delighted. It turns out a lot of Mr. Tilk's career was spent educating other math teachers, so he was the perfect mentor for this project. Through multiple discussions, Mr. Tilk and I developed a plan for the culminating project. I was to attend every math and math class that was offered, which was initially planned to be approximately once every other week. I would, I would remain in the entire classroom for the classroom for the entire period, assisting whoever needed to help. Before my first session in the classroom, I had a couple meetings with Mr. Tilt to discuss the most challenging topic topics for students to work with and the best way to approach them. This especially is, is especially important in math, where you can use the same concept in many different ways. So I'm um, going to use the same concept in many different ways. Because I didn't want to exactly teach it the same way as Mr. Freeman, I, before, before I actually worked with individual students, I spent time on the outside watching how he taught, via, because then I could figure out which approaches were working and which approaches were not. This also enabled me to support the students too. But very soon, I began to work directly with any student who had a question. When I saw a student raise their hand, I would assume they would have difficulty with a problem. My approach was to um, figure out what caused them trouble, walk them through the problem, especially the more difficult parts, and then after the problem was done, they would explain to me what they did so that they could do the problem again without me. There were times when the students themselves didn't know which part was causing the difficulties. This was a part of what I had to do, especially for the more pre-calculus problems, which can include complex fractions, negative numbers, and exponents. My first task was to figure out which part was confusing the student. Then I could help them with that, which would allow them to put the entire problem together. Also, I had known from personal experience that students who are struggling just want to quit. So they, they will not ask for assistance. So, without talking to Mr. Freeman, I walked around the classroom carefully, looking for students who were on their phones, talking to their friends, or just sitting around and not doing anything. 
I didn't know, I mean, they were telling me their issue was, and I was generally able to fix that. Unfortunately, I haven't been able to get, I wasn't able to get photos in this part of the project for fear of disturbing any other students. Right? Additionally, but then halfway through the project, I realized how much fun math tutoring in general is in the first place. So then, so then I was able to con I I contact my middle school math teacher, Miss Manning, to see if I could assist her students too. She was excited that I was able to do this, and I, and, and this was, and I was also, and um, excuse me, and, and so I, I started to work with her in her classroom as well as with her students. Okay, thankfully I was able to get photos here, and this is what they look like. I thought that's gonna look very good. I'm working and not smiling at the camera, right? <laughs> I originally had a video in this presentation. Unfortunately, I'm really afraid of the, the, due to do the time, okay? So I feel, I'm really afraid. I, I really don't want to show this video. I could have had more time now. But either way, my impressions were that every student I tutored, whether it was a middle school or high school, appreciated the tutoring and benefited from this math interventions course. These were just my impressions. How could I verify whether they, they were a success or a failure? I decided, and how can I check, how was I check, what, how was I going to evaluate my results? Since the goal of the product was to increase student, student understanding and decrease hesitation and frustration, I decided to conduct a survey, both in October and in April, where my body's been working, where, where students were asked questions related to their, related to their understanding of math and tutoring. The results were then analyzed. Here is a photo of the surveys. If I can make this work. Here is a photo of the surveys. Graphs of this analysis will follow. If you don't like the next section, don't worry. And don't worry. Don't worry. Don't worry. For those who don't like math, you may not enjoy the next section, but don't worry. There will be no graded exam, no graded, no graded test, and no graded, definitely no graded quiz. All right. Anything you will see beyond this point is is not it. There's no correct answer. Okay. So now it's time to look at the graphs. The first question was designed to, of the survey was designed to determine the students' failure towards math. I asked the students, how do you feel about math? And they were allowed to score from zero to 10, where zero meant I have no idea what math means, and 10 meant I can really understand it. If none of the students understand, understood math, there will be tall columns at the low end of the scale. If all of the students understood math, there will be tall columns at the high end of the scale. End of the, scale. the data I'm showing here were taken in October at the beginning of the math interventions course. As you can see, scores range from 40, which is high, right, right, right in the middle. Not, not necessarily, not really good, but not really bad either. I gave a similar survey in April at the end of the math interventions class. This time, the scores came from five to ten, indicating that most students' performance had improved. Un un unfortunately, because of students shuffling between classes, not all the students at the beginning of the class were there for the end, so it was so it was very difficult to do an individual student by student comparison. But looking at only the students who were there for both the beginning and end, there were six of those. Five of them showed that they five of them showed they had a better understanding of math at the end. This was a sign the combination of math interventions and my tutoring was working. However, however, which one was it, or was it both? I wanted to, I, the other questions of the survey were designed to isolate which was working. Was it math interventions? Was it math tutoring? Or was it both? So the second question asked, did math interventions help? Again, students were allowed to score from zero to 10, where zero meant no, I don't think math interventions was helpful. And 10 meant yes, I did think it really helped me understand the concepts. As you can see, by the end of the class, most students thought it really helped them understand the material, with all scores ranging from 7 to 10, and many of them 10s. Finally, I want to examine what students thought of just math in general, irrespective of a math interventions class. Their responses were a little bit more mixed, but most of the, but mo most of the students scored, 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 thought the, excuse me, all, those, all the students thought were between 5 and 10, and the average satisfaction value was an 8. This was a sign that everything was working. Interestingly, though, when I asked the students if when, when I asked the students if math tutoring was beneficial, students taking algebra students taking algebra classes like algebra one, algebra two, were reported a substantially higher preference for students taking non algebra classes such as geometry by a full twenty percent. Perhaps this is because the skill set for algebra is different than the skill set for other classes, or the or the students struggling with algebra need more assistance because they can't understand the formulas. So in other words, both math interventions and math tutoring resulted in students having a more favorable outlook towards math. math students taking algebra seem to appreciate tutoring more than students taking non-algebra classes, which may reflect my skill set as a tutor. <laughs> Overall, this project suggests it is a worthwhile endeavor for the high school to provide a math tutor interventions course for struggling students, as well as to provide math tutoring whenever possible. In other words, if you're, if you're getting any way away from this presentation, here it is. This project was a success. <laughs> okay? <laughs> Not a year success, but this project was. Okay, now I want to talk about what I experienced in two. One minute. One minute remaining. Oh, John. Yes, no. No, okay. Can I please, like, John, there's a lot more to do, unfortunately. Thanks, Yeah. 
There are many different components to a minimalizable math problem. In my opinion, the most difficult part of the project was pinpointing which exact component was causing the issue and figuring out how to explain that component from many of the students. But right? If, if this, different students require different approaches to understanding. If, if I tried approach A and the student was so confused, I tried B, then C, then D, up until the student understood the concept. Okay? If, um, there was a middle school math problem, which was very common. In, in middle school, a common problem was calculating the area of a pyramid. And it, it, unfortunately, as Mr. Freeman says, I really don't have much time to go into the details. But in other words, I tried different explanations for that one with the Hispanic students. And some of them were, some of them didn't. So this slide is, will be about, this slide will be a little bit about that. Don't talk about that. I have to skip through this. I, I really apologize. But generally, once a student understood one or two troubles and concepts, the entire problem just fell into place. Now the project is done, I have learned there was a lot more in tutoring than math and tutoring than women normally does. For example, I never knew when the students were struggling with a given problem, they were always struggling with the same aspect of it. Now I would like you to return now, now I'd like you to take out your Chromebook or phone again and return to the students so I want to the other question. Okay? Now this is about what I want to study in college. What do you what do you think I should study in college? If I can make if I can make this work. So what should I study in college? No, it's not a quiz. There, there, is, there is no right answer. Okay. <laughs> yep, was, I'm not really surprised. Again, there was no right answer for this quiz, so you don't have to... So you, this, there's no answer for this statement. It's not a quiz, okay? You don't have to worry about it. I want to study all of these things, okay? <laughs> now I'd like to talk about, irrespective of this project, what I plan to do beyond high school. Once this program works, uh, once this program works. So due to graduation, after June 7th, which is only 17 days away from now, I mean, it's actually about uh, 417 or so hours from now, I will be, uh, yes, I know I like doing mental math. I will no longer be brought off ever again. But this does not mean that I'm no longer a mascot. Starting on, I'm excited to show that starting on June 26th, I will turn into a University of Washington Husky. Starting this on, I will be a full-time student at the University of Washington, Seattle. I was accepted into the UW College of the Environment's Department of Atmospheric Sciences, but I'm looking forward to taking classes from the same professor, Mass, who I, who I, am, that I met through his blogs and in person years ago. My current goal is to study meteorology with an emphasis on data and analytics. I'm also going to study minoring in either math or, or physics. I'm not entirely sure on what I want to do beyond college. One option is to become a research meteorologist, which will entail enrolling in graduate school. Another option is to study math education and get a teacher credential. I think this is probably going to be allow me to go in either direction. I've been lucky to be able to sit in on a few classes at the UW in chemistry, biology, physics, and meteorology, and I'm looking forward to taking more of these classes in the future years. Now I'd like to give a brief conclusion and thank you. I apologize for the time. Uh, I'd like to thank some very important people. First, and foremost, I'd like to thank Mr. Freeman for all the way back there, <laughs> and Ms. Manning for providing these students to work with and a class to work with. Without them, I definitely could not do this project. Second, I'd like to thank Mr. Dow for approving the project in the first place. Okay, unfortunately, it's not here right now. Third, I'd like to thank Mr. Tilt for being an excellent mentor for the project. And unfortunately, he's not here either. Without him, we won't be able to understand what caused the students the most difficulty. Fourth, and last, I'd like to thank all community panel members who listened to and gave feedback on this presentation. Okay? You are encouraged to visit me next year and beyond at the University of Washington, Seattle. Seattle. If you have any questions about my project, the presentation, or anything else, I would like to answer them now. <laughs>